hello everyone welcome to mystery mondays i am filming this on my phone um to post later because i'm still having some issues with my laptop and i need to clean off the table where i have my laptop sitting anyway i also need to get a tripod or something to hold this so i don't have to hold it myself and i'm probably going to have a little bit of trouble um reading some of the information that i have for this vlog but um and i wanted to explain the reason that i have not posted the mystery mondays blog yet and that i've gotten a little bit behind again my dog damon which i might have mentioned in the masked singer blog that i did last time but i don't recall or if i did or not for sure but he had um a cervical disc rupture which is um in his neck um part of his spine like where the spine connects to the neck i believe it is and possible intervertebral disc um disease two years ago in april and he started having trouble with his back hips especially on the left side and his left leg both of his legs really and his left foot he was having a whole lot of trouble with so i've been catering to him having to take him outside having to feed him special food um give him um special treats and stuff such as that which has been taking part of my time and of course i'm watching my grandson joey baboey which i really really enjoy doing and i've been watching my other dog some um my other son uh like both of my sons are working now so i have to watch both of the dogs and the grandson when he is here which is kind of a challenge but it's also fun also i've not been feeling super super great i woke up today with a major major headache but i'm thinking that that's because of allergies because when we had a really bad storm here the day before oh it was yesterday i think i can't remember for sure it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday um but yeah we had a really bad storm and it caused a cedar tree um, which me and my kids are all allergic to cedar pollen, as far as I know. But yes, it, there was a cedar tree out, that is outside of our home, just a little ways. Turn this fan up. I thought I'd already done that. But anyway, um, that had not pollinated in years. And when it stormed really bad the other day, it pollinated. Um, I, anyway, I want to say I didn't think that it had pollinated in years. And apparently what the deal is, is the birds eat the like it's the orange fungal type looking things that are on the trees someone told me years ago that that means that the tree has pollinated um and apparently the birds around here eat those off of the trees so i'm like oh so i guess it has been pollinating but the birds actually eat them here so maybe that's a good thing maybe my allergies won't bother me for as long anyway back to the topic at hand <coughs> excuse me um again this is my mystery mondays vlog if you haven't subscribed to my channel be sure to subscribe to it and i have the playlist for the mystery mondays vlogs um all under the same thing so today i'm talking about samuel bulky who went missing in crater lake national park on october 14th 2006 when he was eight years old um i'm also oh i'm sorry discussing missing children is difficult for me as i suppose it would be for most people but people need to know he is still considered to be missing um he does have another name i know i've noted is he? anyway she's wanting to lay in the bed that the sick dog had been laying in but anyway um she, she's trying to get his pad out of it in the towel anyway and she's looking for snacks that he May have left behind so anyway samuel bulky um most of his family and friends called him sammy some of them including his mom called him sam and he also i believe had a second middle name and a second last name perhaps but i didn't write that information down i meant to but i apparently never did and um, my life has been rather hectic so um i wanted to mention also that I found an article concer concerning Aubrey Dameron's case that has information I haven't read before. Um, but I'm not, I decided not to include that in this video because I want to focus on Samuel's disappearance. That's mostly what I cover is the cold cases of missing persons within national parks in the United States of America. I do also do, um, sometimes for mystery monday more recent missing persons cases and criminal cases 
um, that have caught my attention or that somebody has suggested that I cover for my Mystery Mondays blog. Um, so far I've only had two suggestions, which was the um, Gary McCullough and Lena Chapin ones, which is combined together. And then um, it was suggested that I do cover the Aubrey Dameron story. I'm not going to say who the people were that suggested that I discuss those, but um, it was suggested that I discuss them on my blog and to help bring awareness to the cases. But I'm waiting until next Monday to cover the article about Aubrey Dameron um, that I found. Um, I will be posting it next Monday. I'm trying to think. This Monday was the 21st because um, my grandson turned his um, month anniversary was on that day. And um, so that means next Monday will should be the 28th. So I will be posting the one about Aubrey Dameron on the 28th. If any of you are interested in specifically watching about Mystery Monday's blog. Um, and I think that what I'm going to do, I did this with part of the Lena Chapin and Gary McCullough story so that I don't misinterpret anything that is in this article that I found. I think what I'm going to do is just read the entire article and share the numbers for, for agencies that are working her case, which I will also list in this week's blog description. I will list those agencies and the phone numbers for them. The agencies are the Cherokee Nation Marshals Service, I believe it's called, and also the um, FBI office, which I believe is out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, she went missing from the town of my brain is saying Grand Grove, Oklahoma, um, from near Grove, Oklahoma. And I will be talking more about that next Monday on my Mystery Mondays blog, um, March the 28th, 2022. So make sure that you watch that one for more information on the Aubrey Dameron case. So for now, back to Samuel's case. Since he was only eight years old when he went missing in the National Park, I'm not mentioning his height and weight at this time because if he did survive or got kidnapped or something along that line, he would be a lot taller and a lot um, and weigh a lot more than he did at that point. Now there are age progressed videos, videos. There are age progressed pictures of him on the um, Exploited and Missing Children's website. If anyone is interested in viewing those, I need to find a way to edit stuff into my blog so that I can. Um, just show you guys stuff like that. I wish that I knew how to do that. I have been trying to work on learning how to do that for about a year. I downloaded some software onto my computer, which I have as of yet to even really attempt using because, um, yeah, I'm just old and I don't, you know, y'all young people know how that is. I'm old and I don't get it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyhow, back to Samuel. At the time that he went missing, he had light brown hair and brown eyes, so his eyes would most likely still be some shade of brown. His hair might have darkened, or it may have possibly even got lighter. Um, he was last seen wearing a long sleeve black and green striped shirt with cargo pants. No color is mentioned, so I'm guessing they were most likely khaki, since that's what's traditionally considered to be cargo pants. Um... He was wearing red suede shoes, which I think if anyone found those or if anyone knew a kid that had red suede shoes around the time that he went missing, um, it would be like, wow, hey, this must have been Samuel Bulky. Bulky, and did I not, I don't think I even mentioned yet the date that he went missing, but it is later, it is in here later on. I believe it was October the 14th of... Oh, here it is, October the 14th of 2006. So if someone knew someone that had a child around that time who had light brown hair and brown eyes and a mole, I want to say on the left, behind his left ear and on the right side of his neck and wore red suede shoes, you might be like, hey, I think this kid is Samuel Bulky, right? Um, because those are all true for him. I think those red suede shoes would be the clothing item that would stand out the most for him. And he was also wearing a blue winter coat. Now, he was with his dad, so his dad is the one that um, 
gave the description of what he was last seen wearing. He had, as I said, um, a, behind his right ear, I got him, I got him um, transversed, I believe, when I first said it. So he had a mole under his right ear and one on the left side of his throat. Um, so if you knew anyone that had a child that had red suede shoes and had light brown hair, brown eyes, and a mole below his right ear and on the left side of his throat um, around 2006, 2007, that was probably Samuel Bulky. Um, in case, you know, somebody did happen to kidnap him. So reports said Samuel was called Sammy by most people who knew him, and he was from the Portland, Oregon area, which is about four hours north of Crater Lake National Park. Um, the park is also in the state of Oregon, and Sammy and his father were camping. They had a cabin within the park, um, or I believe it was within the park, and they um, were visiting the Crater Lake National Park. So, um, Sammy was last seen near Cascade Mountains, the Cleetwood Cove area in Oregon on October 14, 2006, at around 4 p.m. by his dad, who he was traveling with. Um, and Again, he, that was near the Cascade Mountains in the Cleetwood Cove area in, in Oregon within the Crater Lake National Park on October 14, 2006 at about 4 p.m. Um, anyone with any information about his whereabouts or what happened to him needs to call 541 883-7479, please. And that is the number for the Klamath County Sheriff's Office in Oregon. His dad reported that he had stopped at the park to spend time with his son. They played tag, um, a hide-and-seek ta tag, or both, or um, <laughs> probably, you know, when you play hide-and-seek, the version that some people play when you see the person if you don't catch them if you don't tag them then it's basically like you didn't find them right um or they you combine the two together but so they were playing that on a cinder slope sammy had seen something yellow that he hoped was gold that was part of why they stopped there and were playing on that slope um as it began to get dark outside, Sammy's dad walked to his car, which was a short distance away, so they could return to the cabin they had rented near Diamond Lake. So the cabin they rented was actually near Diamond Lake, which I'm guessing was most likely in the Crater Lake National Park, but I don't really know. Um, and then it is stated that Sammy refused to come down and stayed on the slope. A show I watched about his case said his dad reported that Sammy had thrown a fit and instead ran up the slope to disobey his dad. Um, this made me wonder at the time that I saw this documentary whether or not he was um, possibly autistic or something like that. And it turns out that he was mildly autistic um, and was afraid of bright lights and loud noises. So, you know, those of you who are wondering, well, why didn't his dad just say, hey, get over here and then go get him or whatever, you know, um, yelling at him would have scared him and made him try to find a place to hide. Um, and also the documentary that I saw him on, I believe, was one that's called um, The Lost Children or something along that line. It's one that speculates that possibly... A lot of the children who were missing and not a trace of them has been found were abducted by aliens or something along that line. It definitely posits that as a possibility. I don't think that's a possibility. Um, unfortunately, wildlife that live in these national parks and within a lot of other areas around the world can 
make it where there are no remains left of people but the majority of the time when that happens the clothing is eventually found so um you know it, it but it's hard to say what may have actually happened in this area there was a, a very large lake that developed where a volcano had been years before so um I'll, we'll discuss that more later or i will um but so um, his dad was trying to head back to the cabin before it got dark out and because you know it's very dangerous in national parks after dark and most likely they have a curfew that falls at dark parks in my area do and so as I said um, Sammy refused to come down and stayed on the slope and his dad whose name is Kenneth Bulky said he ran up the slope after Sammy, who most likely thought his dad was still playing chase with him. But Sammy stayed at least 50 feet ahead of him the whole time, preventing his dad from ever catching up to him. Kids are super, super fast. Some people probably go on, well, his dad was taller, his legs were longer. His dad was apparently in his mid to late 40s whenever Sammy went missing. So he may have not been in the best of physical shape, and I'm sure Sammy was in very great shape. Um, so Sammy ran up over, so they were running up the slope, right? They're going up um, to the slope, and Sammy ran up over the top of the slope, and his dad completely lost him. When his dad came up over the top of the slope, he did not see any sign of Sammy anywhere. Now... The, the slope went up and then it went down on the other side um which whether or not sammy knew that because him and his dad had been playing on the slope so i don't know if they had gone to the top of the slope before and so i don't know if sammy knew that it did that or not but apparently it goes you know it, it used to be a volcano so it slopes up on one side and then right down on the other side and the lake is below where it slopes down but there were several obstacles um, on the slope that went down toward the lake so they didn't really think that he probably had fallen into the lake because the obstacles would have stopped him from falling in um i keep trying to go back to the same part that i've already read and i knew that was going to be an issue even though i did it in multicolors. Um, so yeah, his dad never saw his son after the moment that Sammy disappeared over the top of that slope. I can't even imagine how his dad's heart must have dropped upon finally reaching the top, possibly thinking little Sammy was hiding from him just over the top and seeing him absolutely nowhere at all me that would just be it would be heart-wrenching and devastating like where did he go like how could he disappear so quick right his dad was the thing that i read initially said 48 another one said 45 that's why i'm saying he was in his 40s at the time his mid to late 40s um and that's how old he was at the time that sammy disappeared so as i said he may not have been in the best of um, in best shape some people like myself get out and the older you get the more out of shape you get but that's not true for everyone I know um but anyway I'm gonna have to switch hands holding my phone here um but yeah when Sammy disappeared over that slope his dad was in his mid to late 40s um so for those of you who do not have small children um, have never had small children or had to deal with small children in a short time more than 200 oh, i'm sorry i'm not discussing what i thought i was discussing here <laughs> oh my word i am having a time aren't i okay sorry about that um in a short in a short time more than 200 people were searching the area they covered about six square miles, which for those of you who don't know, is approximately 4,000 acres, which is a very vast area, very, very, very large area. But no one had any idea which direction the boy had ran 
and a small child this is what i was thinking i was discussing so i guess it is here anyway a small child can cover a lot of territory in a short time he likely wouldn't have grown tired for several minutes or perhaps even an hour or more it was nearly dark when he went missing which increased the danger to his life in the within the park um and of course at this time i didn't know that he was mildly autistic when i was writing this part down i did not know that he was mildly autistic and afraid of bright lights so that made it harder for them to search for him because if you're carrying a flashlight and you're um even just calling out sammy sammy he's afraid of the loud noises he's afraid of the bright light so um possibly they were just trying to search for him walking around in the dark um but they would have had to have some sort of light to be able to see right and it i guess was probably not dark just yet but it was fixing to get dark before he went missing so i'm guessing by the time that the search people got there it was probably already dark they searched for one week using dogs helicopters and heat sensing cameras which are very important but never found any trace of sammy um, no trace of him at all. After that, they searched from time to time, even though there was heavy snowfall in the area. The park has an elevation of 7,000 feet and therefore averages more than 500 inches of snow a year. That's a lot of snow. There were obstacles, as I stated a while ago, on the slope of the... Um, what used to be volcano the slope um that went down back down toward the lake i'm sorry i'm going to start that sentence over <laughs> again Blah, i'm too tired to be doing this probably but anyway there were obstacles on the slope leading down to the water as i said the lake was below on the other side like they ran up the slope um top the, that side of the slope and there was a slope that went down on the, the other side and went to the water um, which made it unlikely that Sammy had fallen into the lake however technical crews still searched from the rim to the water that's what that area is called I was trying to think of what you call it the rim um, yes they searched from the rim to the water and for those of you who may not know I have mentioned this in my Mystery Mondays vlogs before when they speak of technical teams like this, that is generally people who are experienced at um, rock climbing, rope climbing, rappelling, stuff like that. And the technique that they most often use when they're searching like this is rappelling down the side um, so that they can look in ravines and along slopes that may would be dangerous for other people to just walk down so that's how they searched there for him and um they searched like that just in case he had slid down and fallen into the lake wasn't very likely but there was the possibility when describing Sammy, his mom apparently called him Sam. She stated that he had a passionate personality bordering on stubborn. Um, as his dad said, he threw a fit when he wanted him to go to the car so that they could leave and go back to the cabin before it got dark. She added that his joys were as deep as his disappointments, which I thought was a sweet thing to say. Sam, as she called him, had a mild form of autism that manifested itself in a fear of loud noises and bright lights. This means if his dad had yelled for him to stop, come back, or ask him, um, or ask him where he was, it would have frightened him and probably would have made him hide somewhere. It also meant 
once it was dark, the bright flashlights searchers generally use would have scared him away instead of drawing him toward them like it does most people you might be searching for, unless, of course, they're injured. Search and rescue workers were not able to use air horns and whistles like they generally do because of his fear of loud noises. And I added this part because this is my opinion. Even large groups of people in the area may have scared him. He must have been so terrified out there. His mom stated that she needs evidence that he passed away in order for the final grieving process to take place. Now, re re recall, it is possible there were other people in the area at the the time that they were out there playing and someone saw him pop up over the hill and say maybe it's a woman who had lost a child and wanted a child and maybe she snagged him up, whisked away into the woods somewhere or to her vehicle with him. It's possible that he got abducted and is by someone and is still alive. Though most likely in national parks, people are found to have... Um, passed away after they went missing. Not all of the time there have been some survivors. There have also been some cases where people were abducted from national parks and later found. I will need to look up some information on that now that I've stated it, right? I can't imagine losing a child, especially when the child is young. It's just heart-wrenching to me, even when it happens to another person. The not knowing whether your child is alive or not has to be dev devastating. Like I say, I, I can't imagine it. I've been fortunate and have not lost a child or a grandchild yet. I'm very, very blessed in that. His family, um, his family, Sammy's family, deserves and needs answers. Ugh, sorry, my skin is so dry. Um, this weird winter weather we're having still. Sammy's family deserves and needs answers concerning what happened to him that evening, the evening that he went missing. October 14, 2006, around 4 p.m. at Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. The, let me see if I can find the specific area again. I'll try to remember to put that in my, com in my description section also. Um... Yes, near the Cascade Mountains in the Cleetwood Cove area of Oregon is where it was that the slope was that he went missing from. Um, but yes, they deserve and need answers about what did happen to him that evening. If you hold those answers, please contact... Sorry. If you hold those answers, please contact authorities and tell them your story. The numbers to do so include 541-883-7479, which I gave that number earlier, and that is the Klamath County, Oregon Sheriff's Office number. You can also call... 541-594-3000, which is the general number for the Crater Lake National Park in Oregon, and I will list this information in the description for this blog. Of course, you can also call, text, or email tips to the National Park Service directly um, to their ISB, the National Park Service Investigative Services branch, tip line. Their number is 888-653-0009 and their email address is nps underscore isb at nps.gov. Again, this information will be listed in the description for my blog. Um, along with the contacts for information about Aubrey Dameron's case, and those phone numbers. Also listed there 
will be information concerning what you need to do if you believe you may have found an item or items, including possible remains belonging to a missing person or that seems to have been abandoned. Um, that seems to have been abandoned by someone. That goes without saying, really. If this happens to you, please leave the item or items in place where you found them. Note their location using your coordinates. Take photos and notify the NPS ISB tip line at 888-653-0009 or email them at NPS underscore ISB at NPS.gov. It is my understanding that tips can either be called in or texted to their phone number. Um, I know that I've repeated this information a few times and it will be in the description for the blog. Um, I repeat it several times because it's very important that you have that information and get it in your mind even though it is going to be in the description for the blog. That is all that I have um, for today's Mystery Mondays blog. Make sure that you subscribe, like the video, share on your social media so that other people can learn about my channel and what it is that I do or am striving to do. Um, just getting knowledge out there about these missing persons, cold cases within the national parks in the United States, other missing persons cases and criminal cases that people comment and let me know that they think that I should um, discuss or family members bring up friends on Facebook and such as that because I often share these videos on my Facebook page. So thank you all for viewing and subscribing and sharing to your social media so more people do know about my channel. Until next time, everyone have a great whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world. Stay safe and stay positive.